in this class uh, we will discuss about uh, the design steps of bunkers so normally bunkers and silos they are constructed to store large quantities of grains uh, for example wheat or any other grain or corn etc so the bunkers may be uh, they are also called as bins so they are made up of uh, usually rcc or steel so rcc bunkers are uh, preferable because they are uh, maintain cost space less and also uh, construction uh, cost also is comparatively less than that of steel bunkers so in bunkers uh, you will be having uh, two types one is uh, rectangular and other is uh, circular now in this class we will uh, see how a rectangular bunker uh, can be designed what are the pressures or forces that could be considered and what are the design criteria uh, we have to consider in the design of uh, rectangular bunker bunkers now here this is a schematic representation of a bunker so here you can see that uh, <coughs> a bunker consists of a cylindrical portion and a top portion in the form of a heap or a triangular portion and the bottom portion which consists of a hopper bottom so there are three portions here so usually the material is stored in this bunker so in the case of a rectangular bunker the central portion cylindrical portion uh, will be actually uh, it, it will be having a rectangular shape like this this is the plan so if it is uh, circular it will be actually circular shape now these are the components of a bunker you can see that uh, you have three parts as i have already told so this is the heat portion so the material is stored in this portion and when this upper bottom is opened uh, then the, the material flows down and usually it will be carried uh, through some trucks and all so columns are provided to support the bunker and the spacing between the columns is, uh, so is such that a uh, vehicle can pass through uh, in between two columns so these are the edge beams the edge beams are provided here uh, these edge beams are normally uh, they will uh, they, they are provided to uh, for accommodating the attachment of the conveyor supports so here so this is the elevation so this this is the side wall so side wall and this is the half, upper bottom we have a sloped uh, strap portion in the upper bottom and this is the opening portion so this is the opening portion so you can see in plan it will be like this it will be like this in plan this is the opening portion and this is the upper bottom uh, portion and uh, you will be having the uh, edge beams as already told to accommodate for the conveyor supports and uh, you, you will be having an angle here theta this is the angle made by the sloping uh, floor of the upper bottom with respect to horizontal it is represented as theta normally this theta value is detected as 45 degrees and uh, this uh, phi is called as the angle of repose of the material so this angle of repose of the material depends on the type of the material for wheat it is different for coal it is different usually it varies from 20 to 30 degrees so now the design uh, we can classify the beams into two types one is a shallow bin another is a deep bin or silo so what happens is that is decided based on the type of failure here suppose if the plane of rupture if the plane of rupture it cuts the material itself that is top uh, surface of the material itself then such a type of uh, bin is called as a shallow bin or silo if the plane of rupture cuts the wall its wall then it is called as deep bin so that will be more in that case now of course uh, we will go to the design steps so design consists of uh, the design of uh, four parts here so let us take a rectangular bunker design the data required for the design are like this what is the capacity of that bunker how much material we can store in that bunker that should be given unit weight of material that is for wheat or uh, for coal what is the uh, unit weight in kilonewton per meter cube so this gamma is given in kilonewton per meter cube and this capacity normally it will be given in kilonewtons 
how much uh, weight of what uh, material can be stored in that bunker. Then angle of repose pi will be given in degrees of the material to be stored. Coefficient of friction between material and concrete because it is made of RCC. So mu dash that is a constant value and weights of concrete may be M20 or M25 and steel 415 or 500. So these are the data that is required for the design of a rectangular bunker. Now, in the design process, as I already told, you have to design four components mainly. One is the vertical wall. So this is the vertical wall so we have to design. So you can see here, this is the plan. This is the plan of the cylindrical portion of the bunker where I can take the larger, since it is rectangular, the larger uh, dimension I will take it as L, smaller dimension as B. And uh, we have to calculate one pressure, the value of horizontal pressure. Actually, when the material is stored here, that material will exert a horizontal pressure on the walls, on the walls, just like water. Hydrostatic pressure, this material exerts some horizontal pressure, pH. So that pH value we have to calculate using this formula gamma into capital H into cos square phi. So you have to remember this formula. So gamma is once again unit weight of that material to be stored. H is this height. This height, height of the cylindrical portion or the middle portion. This H has to be computed. So in the design example I am going to explain how to compute the value of H. Then cos square phi, phi is already known. So using this formula you calculate the horizontal pressure. So you can see here the unit of this will be gamma will be in kilometer per meter cube, h will be in meter, this is a constant. So the unit of this will be kilometer per meter square. So calculate this value of pH. That is why it is called as pressure because the unit is per meter square. Now after that you have to calculate bending moments due to that uh, horizontal uh, pressure you have to calculate the bending moments at different points. Since it is symmetrical here, equal pressure is exerted on all the four walls. pH is same for all the four walls. So uh, what happens? We can have equal values of bending moments at all these four corner points of the wall. So A M A is equal to M B is equal to M C is equal to M D at all the corner points. The formula for bending moment is this. So you have to remember this formula in the design. So directly you can use this formula minus pH by 12. pH is already known here into L square plus B square pi is L into B. So length into breadth. So like that. So if L and B sometimes it may be equal. If L and B are equal, so then what happens this L can L can be equal to B and one of these will get cancelled. So L square and L square because one is plus another is minus only B square and you will get. So if L is equal to B, then this will be very simple. It becomes minus B H by 12 into L square because this gets cancelled. Similarly, at the center of long box, so A B is long over here, C D is long over here. I have taken L greater than B. If they are equal, then both are same. Now, all the four walls they have the same length. <coughs> what happens when L is equal to B? We have to put in the same power length. So center of at the center of long box, that means. Central round was affected as E and F. The values of bending moments will be M E is equal to M F. It is pH L, pH into L square by H minus pH by 12 into L square plus B square by H L into B. So this is it. So this is the additional term. So you have to remember this also. Then the at the center of short term, short term, that is G and H. So M D will be equal to M H. That is B that will be equal to pH into B square by A minus pH by 12 into L square plus B square minus A. So this term remains same in both these two, but whereas here L is replaced by B. If L is equal to B, then all these four values, M E, M F, M G, and M H, they are all equal. If it is a square uh, bulk. Okay? So after uh, getting this, you have to calculate one more part, direct tension. So what happens? Here, in the long wall, in the case of uh, bunker, due to the weight of the material and all, it will be subject to direct tension force also. It is given by pH into B by 2. For long wall, it is pH into B by 2. For short wall, it is pH into L by 2. 
once again if n is equal to b then both of them will be equal so this these are the, the moment equations and tension uh, equation for vertical walls so we have to design the reinforcement to uh, take care of this bending moment as well as this tension force we will discuss that in design example now second the component of the bunker is hopper bar that is this force to this this force we have to design of course this is an opening so this hopper bottom consists of two sloping slabs so it is called as the sloping slab of course one will be like this another will be like this once again this is symmetrical therefore you can take one part of the uh, hopper bottom that is one sloping slab if you design same reinforcement is provided for the other portion also so here you can see here how the load transfer mechanism is so w is the total weight so total weight of material as well as self weight of the hopper bottom that means it consists of both live load and dead load if w is the total weight tension force will be acting like this along this because weight is acting downwards so to compensate the for equilibrium the tension force will develop along the slab like this so that i have said that t if theta is the angle if theta is the angle made by the hopper bottom the horizontal then according to this uh, if you apply the equilibrium equation t will be equal to w divided by sin theta or t sin theta is w so if you resolve that you will get that so p value you can find so tension force you can direct tension force you can calculate from this equation which is acting on the uh, sloping force so direct tension for vertical wall is this these two found that direct tension for sloping force is this now what do we have to do here is suppose if you take uh, Uh, the upper bottom portion plan this is the plan of the upper bottom portion this is the opening portion and this these four are the sloping slabs so sloping slab so sloping slab portion now here l what how to take l here is l is nothing but the center to the center distance of this sloping slab point these two points that is small l and h there is one more term uh, uh, called h Which is depth at midpoint of sloping slab. That means midpoint or midpoint means this. So if you come to this uh, the elevation here, so this is the midpoint of this sloping slab. So total depth of material. So the material is going from here to here. See here, this is the top point of the material. So from here to here, whatever depth is there, from the middle point of the sloping slab to the top point of the material, whatever depth is there, that is h, small h. So the depth of midpoint of sloping slab. Then, from one, once you know uh, these uh, things, uh, you can calculate one term called total normal pressure acting on the hopper bottom, which is given by this formula. So better if you have to remember this formula. Let us not go in detail about the derivation of that. So if you want to design, if you want to design the hopper bottom, you have to calculate this. Uh, Total gamma pressure once again it is in kilometer per meter square. The formula is gamma h into cos by theta. So gamma is once again one here. H is calculated here. Cos by theta. Theta is once again the slope of the uh, upper bottom with respect to horizontal. That value normally is 45 degrees plus gamma h into cos by phi where phi is the angle of repose into sin by theta. Plus W is the self weight of sloping slab only into cos theta. So this is the formula used to find the total normal pressure acting on the hopper bottom. So now once you get this value of Q in kilometer per meter square, we need to calculate two values of bending moment. One negative, one other positive. So the maximum negative bending moment is <coughs> Q n square by 12. Maximum positive bending moment is Q n square by 24. So we have to design the reinforcements for these two values of bending moments. You can observe here is maximum negative bending moment is two times the maximum positive bending moment. Twelve is there, twenty-four is there. So once you design the reinforcement according to as you are IS four five six two thousand and SP sixteen, you can use. So those two will be provided in the examination. You can use those and calculate the required reinforcements and provide it accordingly. So this is. Uh, A hardy bending moment negative. This is saggy bending moment. So we have to provide the reinforcements according to the nature of the bending moment. So once you get 
these values of maximum value for ready moment we are going to calculate the reinforcements ast required for that next third component is the edge beam normally edge beams are not designed normal beams are provided clear beam and clear beam beams are provided and the normal reinforcement is provided for of tor 12 or tor 16 you can provide and another thing is uh, tension member so tension member design uh, what you have to do is once you calculate t here so this for this you have to design reinforcement separately so you have to design reinforcement for bending moment and design reinforcement of tension core separately and then add so your total ast for this uh, upper water portion will be uh, bending moment uh, reinforcement plus uh, tension reinforcement so the tension reinforcement is calculated using this formula ast is equal to 1.5 times p so 1.5 is the factor of safety t is the uh, force whatever we have got here Uh, that into one point by divided by point eight seven that is the factor of safety into F Y. So F Y may be four one five or five hundred depending on the grade. So once you get this A S T T, this A S T T is added to whatever bending moment, uh, whatever uh, steel we have got here, whatever steel we have got here, that steel you can get as A S T bending moment. So if you add those two, you get the total reinforcement that is required for the upper bottom. So this is the these are the design steps uh, we have to follow uh, in the case of a rectangular bunker. Of course, uh, design of column uh, you have to as usual. Uh, you have to take the moment and uh, axial force uh, acting on the column and it can use just this discharge for the design of column and design of footing also you, you can do as usual. We have done uh, for a building you have done design of footing you know like that only can do. So in the examination mainly they will ask. Uh, Design of uh, vertical walls and design of uh, upper part because rest of the uh, designs are similar to your RCC design. So in the next class, I will take up a rectangular uh, uh, bunker uh, design example.